Hi, it's Tim Hagen from Progress Coaching, and welcome to another episode for the Coaching Conversations podcast. Now, we are on Stitcher, we are on iTunes, and multiple different channels. Please check us out. Now, one of the things that you'll get out of our podcast episodes is a lot of content, a lot of strategy. It's not fluff, it's not concept. Yet we really want you to engage with the content and let us know your feedback. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. If there's topics you'd love to have us address, we would love to share them with you. Let us know your impact and let us know your feedback. You know, when we're coaching people, especially in the workplace, I think about three levels of interaction. When you think about the present state, You know, we have to coach the person, right? We have to coach the person as it relates to the job. And then I think about the future state. Where does somebody want to go? And I just read a report that career coaching, you know, people having a career path was more valuable than having a high salary. So it begs the question, you know, what's the inhibitor here? What's the challenge that we have? So we have our present state. We have to coach them to do the job. We have to coach the person doing the job. And then we also have to coach so they can reach their destination. But then there's a third level. And I call this the foundational level. I think we do not address the number one challenge we have with people in coaching, especially in the workplace. When you think about somebody, when you think about somebody's resistance to coaching or mentoring or feedback or leadership, what comes to mind? Resistance to feedback, self-awareness, self-regulation, looking in the mirror are typical things that we hear. So it begs the question, why do we have this problem? Well, the challenge that we have is in our traditional school systems, we typically do not have training. We do not have education as it relates to seeking and accepting feedback professionally and thoughtfully. So think about that. What we typically do is we accept or dismiss feedback based on agreement or disagreement. So I was talking to someone the other day, and this is a pretty typical conversation. Well, my boss gave me this feedback and and, and I just disagreed with it and I got really angry. And I said, why did you get angry? The person goes, well, I just disagreed with the feedback. I go, no, I get that. You disagreed. I said, why are you angry? He said, I just told you. I said, no, no, no. I get you disagreed with it. Yet you're angry. So what, can I put some words in your mouth? And he said, sure. I said, so everybody's got to be exactly in alignment with you and say exactly everything right or you get angry. He said, no, that's not what I'm saying. I said, so why did you get angry? He said, yeah, okay, I get your point. I said, look, do you think he wants to give you feedback again? What do you mean? I said, well, according to you, you got angry. Oh, I didn't I didn't show him I got angry. I go, sure you did. <laughs> Don't tell me you think you didn't show it. Of course you did. We're emotional creatures. We reveal ourselves. I said, let me ask you something. Honestly, how often do you seek feedback and just say thank you strategically? Anyone and everyone listening to this podcast right now, you know the answer. There was no answer. So I looked at him and I said, look, giving feedback is tough. Giving feedback is really, really tough. And so when you sit there and you think about it, and you think about feedback, it's not something that we normally just go and do. It's not something that we normally just think about. It's typically something we reactively deal with. And so when you think about it, we have to, more than anything, be in a state of mind that we've got to make it easy for the other person, right? Giving someone feedback who's resistant is no fun. You know, I often tell this to individual contributors, employees, do you know leaders don't want to give feedback? And people will look at you stunned. What do you mean? I go, would you want to give you feedback? And all of a sudden you get this look of, oh yeah, well, I, I, I don't know. And I think it's something that we all need to really be conscientious of. And I think it's something that we have an opportunity to think about. 
And so when we're working with people, we have to understand as leaders, we're coaching the person in their present state to do a good job, but also coaching the person to feel good about getting better. And then we're coaching them to their ideal state, their career aspiration and goals if they have them. Yet we also have to deal with these foundational things like feedback, motivation, attitude, leadership latitude. The foundational stuff is where people typically spend most of their time when dealing with employees. So what do we do about it? Number one, I wish our school systems did a good job of this and they don't because they have a lot in their plates. But if we taught people how to seek and accept feedback, I'm telling you the workplace would be 100% better. Number two, if we taught people leadership latitude, meaning we're not here to judge our leaders, our job is to follow our leaders in what they think we should do. You know, I think the military's got it right. When a colonel says we're going up that hill, everybody goes up the hill without question. There's absolute synchronization, uniformity. Can you imagine if we went into war and somebody says, no, I don't feel like fighting today. You'd be scared, wouldn't you? So the fact of the matter is foundationally, feedback, motivation, attitude, being a great teammate, they are not at the forefront of people's minds. Yet they are the things brought up the most by leaders in terms of what are the roadblocks? What are the inhibitors to someone's career or development? So we have an opportunity, everybody. And where do we start? Number one, get people practicing the acceptance of feedback. Asking for it and saying thank you. And someone says, what if I disagree? I said, don't bring it up right then. Bring it up later. Make it easy for people to approach and coach you. So this is why I brought this all up. It falls under the guise of approachability, coachability. We all have an opportunity to become coachable and to become approachable. If we do that, we're easier to work with, we're easier to coach, we're easier to promote, we're easier to give salaries to. Find your approachability, coachability. Now, if this intrigues you, we have actually built out our own AI approachability, coachability assessment tool. If you're intrigued and you want to measure people's approachability, coachability in your workplace, send me an email at tim at progresscoachingleader.com and put right on the subject line, approachability, coachability assessment tool, and we'll actually send you a sample. Thank you for listening to another episode of Coaching Conversations by Tim Hagen and Progress Coaching. Now, our company is always coming out with new and innovative solutions to help leaders coach their employees. And recently, we just created a new service called Coach to You, where leaders can pick and choose topics and assign 7 to 21-day programs for employees to learn and, more importantly, apply actions and then reflect and share what they're going to do going forward as a result of the learning. It's called Coach to You. We're literally bringing coaching to your employees. If you're intrigued, we'll have a link in each one of our episodes where you can get more information. And again, thank you so much for listening to another episode.